Pagan Perspective. I'm Tara and it is subs week and this week we are talking about totem animals. So I will put in the description box like the topic and what we'll cover with totem animals but for me my experience with totem animals are not extremely extensive. I believe I know what my totem animals are um, at least for now. Um, I do, I do believe um, that they're not something that has to always be your totem animal. I think for some they change over, over time and experience. Like you may have a dog for your, the beginning of your uh, spiritual path and then it might change to a horse down the road. Uh, for me, I think I will have um, two very constant totem animals and that would be cat which I think is for a lot of witches <laughs> cats are kind of associated with witches pretty strongly and it's extremely common um or a feline of some sort uh and the other one is snakes which I had mentioned in the last subs week we did uh for St. Patrick's Day and All Snakes Day um for me uh I don't do too much active work with them. I think for me uh, a lot of them are symbolism. Some believe uh, totem animals can be more of like a spiritual intangible but kind of a kind of a spirit guidey ghosty type feel. For me I don't I don't believe that. I think totem animals are more that they're here in reality or they are a symbol. Uh, for me, obviously, if you've ever watched any of my personal videos, I have two cats and I've always absolutely loved cats and I feel very connected to them. I'm, I'm a big animal person in general, but cats have been a constant in my life. I honestly can't think of a time I really didn't have cats in my life. <laughs> Maybe for a year or something, but even then it's like, I had some interaction with feelings. I don't know. They they come for me and I understand them and I think they understand me. And I know this might sound a little bit weird, but I've been told I behave like a cat at times. I really don't know what that necessarily consists of, but it's been told to me by a few people and though it sounds weird, oh well. Um, <laughs> um, and then with snakes, um, I don't have any snakes in my house or anything. Um, I have considered it, but I have a kid and I don't feel like dealing with that. And I know reptiles have a tendency to smell a bit um, when you care for them. I've had to care, care for lizards in the past and they just, it's just a pain to take care of them. But snakes are kind of a constant in my life. Either I see them in nature. Washington has a buttload of snakes, especially garter snakes. Um, but I also have a lot of jewelry that symbolizes it. Um, I most likely will get a tattoo that has a snake on it. Um, for me, uh, snakes kind of symbolize not slyness or snaky behavior where it's kind of associated with not pleasant personality traits, but more Oh, how can I word this? More the ability to... I feel that snakes are actually quite intelligent, um, even though they have really small brains. But that's that's my opinion, even if biology of snakes suggests otherwise. Um, often snakes can camouflage, they can adapt to intense heat or cold because they're cold-blooded animals. Um, they're adaptive animals. Um, they can be predatory. Um, but oftentimes they're more, they like eat bugs or something, uh, <laughs> for a lot of those that are smaller, um, which most of them are pretty small, or they'll eat rodents, um, or what would be con considered pests. So, um, snakes definitely are pest ridders. <laughs> That's a word. Um. I don't know. It's it's hard to really explain like my vibes with a snake. Uh they I feel like snakes can always get through things. Like 
snakes can climb trees by doing I don't even know how but with their muscle control uh, snakes can be in the ground under rocks as I said they they can camouflage at times or adapt to certain places they're ever-changing um, they shed fairly regularly um, they can live quite a long time depending on what species it is um, but yeah I think for me it's mostly the adaptable aspect of snakes and for cats um, it's definitely the intelligence and I also equate them to spiritual animals as in like like the Egyptians really really love their cats <laughs> in a spiritual way um, I'll have to look into more about that but on the surface that's what it is um, cats tend to like being around when people are doing path working or, or magic um, I don't know if they find it interesting or if they're just drawn to it um, but that's kind of with what cats are for me as a totem animal um, but I don't really actively use them symbolically or or actively in any of my my workings as a witch um, um, just just either on a very rare occasion maybe as a symbol but um, my my active practice uh, there's there's nothing I really have them involved with and I certainly wouldn't do any like sacrifice of any animal um, even though some may do that that's I respect that that's that's you though <laughs> um, I I find it interesting when people people talk about their totem animals and they have very different perspectives on what that means to them as it as you've seen during the week um that some feel that they are more of a spiritual like entity rather than uh act actual being or a symbol it it ver differs from person to person and from path to path um but yeah, I think that's about all I've got to say on this topic. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask below and I could maybe express a little bit more in detail if you guys have any specific areas you want me to cover with, with how I feel about total minerals. So I'll talk to you guys later.